Okay, so what I'm going to be, be just running you through in, in, in my sort of allocated uh, time um, is um, a few months ago I was um, uh, playing around with the, with the graded uh, quizzing slides and I wanted to come up with something that didn't look anything like the you know the stock standard so if you've been using storyline for a while you know the stock standard question with the um, you know the gray box for feedback and and the submit um, button in the corner um, so um, yeah, one weekend I just just played around with it f for for a few hours, and, and a lot of the the the, uh, the final design, I guess, it was yeah you know, trial and error to get there. Um, so, but I wanted to have a, a in my mind, I wanted to do a, f a couple of different things. One is that I wanted to have the ability to be able to show the question, the responses, and the feedback all at the same time. So I wanted to be able to so so I didn't want to have the feedback overlapping. Um, I also wanted, I didn't want to use the submit button, I wanted to see was there another way that I could um, submit an interaction without actually having that submit button. Um, so I guess what I came up with was that, um, you know, I can select my response and then as it says to click on the question mark and then it tells me if, if the question's right or not right and, and in this case I, I get to have another go. So I've got a, a try again button here and I can and have another try and and then I can see if the, the question's correct. Um, and then when I continue, again, I've just got another, um, you know, a different type of, of, of quiz slide. Now these probably work better on, you know, maybe on your quiz slides that don't have particularly long, you know, uh, winded answers and things. And the way that I've done it, um, you know, you may not decide, you may decide to set it up differently to that. But hopefully what I'm going to show you in Storyline might give you some ideas about how you might be able to you know, customise your um, quizzing slides and, and the way I, uh, what I've used to do it I should say is I've, I've mainly customised the Feedback Master um, but I've also done a little bit of customisation in the Slide Master, okay, so, so say in this one so what I'm going to do is um, by doing it in the, both the slide and the feedback masters, it, it allows me to apply some of these design elements across different kind of quizzing slides. So, you know, I've had a true, false, a multiple choice, and now a multiple response, but they're all kind of set up the same way. So using those master layouts um, has allowed me to kind of keep that consistency throughout my courses, uh, th sorry, throughout the questions. So I'll show you now how I did that. So I'll bring up Storyline, which I've got open, and I've just got a new project, um, you know, with a, uh, with a slide in it, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually customise the, a little bit in the Slide Master, just to show you how that, how that works. So, I mean, let us know in the chat area um, um, if you've, if you've used the, the, the master slide areas. Um, there's a few of us moderating um, in the chat area today. So there's Matt and myself and also Ben. Um, I, I should have uh, said that from the PowerPoint slide. There'll be the three of us um, kind of keeping an eye on the, the chat area. So let us know if you use the slide and or the feedback masters or if you maybe you've never heard of them before. Or maybe you use them all the time. Um, so um, what I'm going to start with is the slide master. So I've gone to the view tab and I'm going to choose the slide master option. Now the slide master controls layouts that are applied across the whole uh, the whole course and, and can be really handy for reoccurring elements so that you get that consistency every time. So from the storyline training people use them for different things, they might put background images or if they have a logo they might decide to put it on a slide master, you can put layers and buttons and triggers and all different things on, on your on your slide masters um, and you can uh, really you know maintain some consistency throughout your course. So all I did um, and because I, I set up the demo a few months ago when I went back to kind of um, you know prepare for this th this session I kind of noticed a couple of things that I probably could do differently so I, I've, I've incorporated them into the presentation today. So in the slide master area we have this slide at the top which controls the whatever's on this slide will appear on these different layout slides underneath. Um, but what I want to play around with here is it, it's a couple of layouts down it's called the question layout. So if I click on it 
um, this is how every this is why every time when you insert a graded uh, quiz question that the, the text box is always at the top uh, followed by the choices um, straight underneath because of the positioning of these elements here so what I did and, th and this is all all I kind of did I just wanted to come up with a with a look and feel so this will be I guess personal for your own particular courses uh, I just inserted a shape just a rectangle and then with the shape selected it's got formatting options so I went to the formatting tab and I just made it this particular blue color that I liked uh, then what I did I just placed it at the top of my slide and it's actually covering up the text boxes now so I'm going to just right click on the, the rectangle there and send it backwards okay so now my heading text box is on top of the, the, the um, blue shape that I've just put in however it's black on blue so you can't really read it so I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to make the color white and I might also have a different um, you know maybe a different font so I might just go with uh, just Arial black you can have whatever font you want so that's I guess that part of the the, the slide set up um, now if I had have done that blue box to this very top master layout that would have applied it to all of the other layouts as well so I'll chuck that up there so you may want to um, you know, have some th recurring things across all, but for today I'm just focusing on this quiz slide layout. Now, um, I was playing around with some designs and, and I, I actually wanted to have, um, I didn't want to have square, so I wanted to use circles. I think I must have been, you know, playing around with circles a lot at the time. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert um, a shape, a circle shape, and just draw it on here. And from some trial and error, I made the shape um, 300 by 300 pixels. So, I mean, I could keep dragging the, the shape out until I got it about the right size, but with that circle selected, if I go to the Format tab uh, for the circle, I can see over on the right the size and width. If I just type in 300, then I have a 300 by 300 circle, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to have that same color blue outline but with no fill and with the outline I'm also going to play around with the weight so that the weight is the thickness of the outline so I'm going to make it five point and then I'm just going to position the slot the circle somewhere I mean I'm just doing by eye but you could you could get right into it and you can position it wherever you want but I, about there is fine what I also on that particular um, demo it had a little question mark so as you may know with shapes if I just type uh, I can put some text within a shape now it's white at the moment because um, because that's just the default color but if I make it blue so I've got this tiny little question mark now um, it's obviously way too small so all I did was um, I just upped the size of it so maybe try a hundred so I have a nice big question mark maybe even 120 okay so a nice big question mark in there and then I just inserted some lines uh, again went to the format tab and made the line the same color and the same five point weight and to get the line where I need it to be if I hover it and when I see the dotted lines when I see one going straight through the center I know it's lined up straight down the middle of the middle of the uh, middle of the circle there and if I make a copy of that um, that line and I can put one down the bottom as well okay and I might need to stretch it out just to make it a bit longer now as is that looks like the other one um, um, but the only problem is is see this this box here where it says click to enter choice textiles that's where the answer uh, the answers will be displayed the all the, the true false multi-choice answers are displayed there so at the moment I don't want it to overlap where my circle is so if I grab from the left here in the middle and drag it across and then even from the top maybe drag it down as well and it just means th this sets the parameters for where those responses will be displayed on the screen you can still change it slide to slide level but by default it'll it'll kind of put it over here to the right of the of the of the uh, of the circle so that's I guess my that my layout set my layouts kind of good to go the one thing I'm going to do before I leave here is the feedback that I want to give um, 
uh, I want it to appear exactly over the top of the, the circle here. So I need to, uh, my feedback layer is going to be a circle, but I need it to be in exactly the same position. Now one way I could do it would be just to copy and paste this circle from the feedback master, the slide master, sorry, to the feedback. Or another way you could do it, and this might work for other things in Storyline, is if you select the object and then right click, there's an option uh, down towards the bottom called size and position. And I know the size of it already, it's 300 by 300, but if I choose this position tab underneath, my, this particular circle on the master is positioned 39 horizontal and 149 vertical, and that's from the top left hand corner. So I'm just going to write down those numbers on a little bit of paper that I've got here, and I'll need to remember that for later. And I'm going to now close this off, I just needed to know that information. So that's my, my slide set up and now I can close the master view and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the feedback master so I'm going to go back to the view tab and the feedback master and I'm going to play around with the look of the feedback because I don't want this grey box I want it to be over the top of that circle so the first thing I'm going to do is on this very top layer here is I'm going to uh, select my little grey box and I'm going to delete it altogether. I'm going to keep the text boxes because I'll use them later um, and you'll see that it's actually taken the grey box out on all of the, the, uh, the layouts as well which is fine. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert a circle again, um, I'll go to the format tab and I'll um, give it that fill and outline and I'll also make it 300 by 300. Now I need this to line up exactly above where the question mark circle is, so to do that with it selected if I right click and now go down to size and position, the position of this circle if I make it the same as the other one 39 by 149, now it's in exactly the same place. Now with these text boxes this is where like the word correct is displayed and this is the box that will show you feedback. I need to, I'm just going to keep you, I'm going to reuse them and I'm just going to position them over the circle. Um, so I'll start with the, the, the title, I'll shrink it in and make it a little bit smaller and I'll put it sort of at the top of the circle here. Um, now because I've added the circle to this slide, um, it's put the circle over the top of everything else. So what I can actually do from the timeline, and you might know this already, that the timeline actually shows um, when things overlap which is going to be on the top and which is on the bottom. If I, with that box selected, drag it straight up, it now puts it at the top. And I can go to the Home tab and make the text white. I'm going to do the same thing for where the feedback is going to go. And what I need to just be careful of when I'm doing this, I'll also bring that up to the top, is that I don't want the feedback box to hang over the edge. I don't want the feedback to go outside of the boundaries of the circle. So again, this design may, may or may not suit you. If you've got a lot of feedback, maybe a, a different shape might be better. But for me, this kind of worked okay. Um, I'll also, while I'm in those text boxes, I'm just going to have all the text centered. So it keeps it like that. And this button, so this is the button that would be where you you know you click to continue or or whatever. I'm just I moved it down to the bottom corner, and then in the button tools, I just I didn't I don't want the shadow and I don't want the kind of curved kind of gradient. So I just in the formatting tool of the button just chose any flat design, uh, and then just made the colours uh, the same blue. The out, oops, sorry the outline and the fill colours exactly the same. And finally, I just inserted another line. Uh, made it the same colour and that same five point weight and just chucked it on top of the button there. Now with this circle what I also should do is um, make, just make sure that with the outline that it's also the same five point uh, weight and I'll just double check my size and position, 39 by 149, yep that's all good. Now this layer does generally controls what's on the layers beneath, however I do find with Feedback Masters the text boxes often don't move. So I can't be bothered going in and, and um, uh, you know reconfiguring all these text boxes, so I'm just going to delete them off. 
and I'm going to actually just copy and paste the text box from the overall master and paste them on those different layers. So now I'm a mouse person, so I, I just right click and copy, but you control um, C and V or whatever it is, you can use those as well. So I'll copy that there, paste it on, and paste it on, and paste it on. So what I've done is I've now got my overall layout set, and I've got my correct, my incorrect, and my try again um, uh, layers set. Now, for one other little thing that I wanted to do was I just wanted to have, you know, the, the correct and incorrect showed red and green. Okay, so now because I've already got the colour set at the top, um, I can't actually on these layout slides, uh, you know, change the colour of that circle. So what I did was I worked out that if I um, went back to the top layout, uh, feedback master layout, and I made a copy of that circle, and then I went down to each to my two layouts and I pasted it on, I could, I would essentially have two circles on here, the one that it picks up from the master, and then, you know, this second one that I'm going to recolor the circle so that the fill color is, is green. Okay, now it's green because this is the correct layer. So the only thing is it's covering my text boxes. So again, from the timeline, I'm just going to slide them up the timeline so that they'll be displayed. On the incorrect one, I'm also going to do the same thing. Put this, paste the circle on, make the fill like a ready color, and then slide those text boxes so that they're not covered. So, so like that. Now I could do something again for the try again, I'd have to do the same thing uh, uh, for the try again, um, but I'm happy enough for the blue, the blue's fine. So essentially that's all I need to do in that particular case. So if I close this master slide down, so I just have a just a regular text slide. Now I put that, remember I put that uh, rectangle on top of the, the very top slide master, that's why I'm seeing it there. But if I now go and I insert a new slide, uh, I'll choose quizzing and just to make it easy I'll just insert a true false question. It's going to, as per normal, go to um, the form view first, so we, we put in the the parameters of the of the particular question. Um, so we have the space at the top to uh, enter the, the, the choice. Uh, oops. So I'll just go question here and we'll just say that true is the correct answer. You can set up the same feedback options, the number of attempts, I might make two. Um, but if I jump over to slide view now, now I have my layer my layout, sorry, so this one is picking up from the slide master, but if I look at my feedback masters, it picks up from the different feedback masters that we just created. So if I previewed out this slide, just to test that it's working, we can hit true. Now, at the moment though, I've still got the submit button, but essentially the the, the slide and the layers are, are working, but remember I said I didn't want to have that submit. So I wanted to come up with a way of, of, of doing the interaction differently. And so by default, um, we have this submit interaction trigger when they click the submit button. But I went down to the base layer here in the slide properties, and I turned mine off because I wanted to do it differently. So when I turned it off, it, it took the trigger out. So I was kind of in a bit of trouble. But what I thought, because what I wanted them to do was to click on the question mark to submit their answer. So all I did was I went back to the insert tab and the controls area, and I just inserted a hotspot over the top of that question mark. So while I think they're clicking on the question mark, they're actually clicking on the hotspot. Now you could do the free form and draw it around the shape of the question mark, or I just picked the oval and just put it on and put it over the top of the question mark something like that, maybe make it in a little bit tighter, you, you, know, you play around with it for, you, for yourselves. Uh, and then um, we see that because I've put a hotspot in, I've got a trigger to show layer, which is a common uh, trigger for, for using hotspots, but I'm just going to adjust that trigger and I'm going to make the action submit interaction 
the interaction is this true-false interaction when the user clicks the hotspot and then I'll say OK. So now what will happen is when I preview out the slide, now I can, I don't have a submit button down the bottom right, but if I, I can now click on what I think I'm clicking on the question mark after I pick my answer and then it tells me I've selected the correct response or whatever. So again, on the individual layers, you could go in and customise what your actual feedback says, um, but I guess this is more just the, 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 the out. The, the, the layout and, and the design of it. Now I did try putting the hotspot on the master slide and, and, and with the trigger to submit the interaction that way, but I, I, look, I found it didn't really work. So um, I, um, I had to go in manually and, and just put that on every single quiz slide that I insert, but it doesn't really matter what uh, type of quiz slide you, you put in, multiple choice. Um, again, the layout's still all the same on every slide. So yeah, I, I guess my way of, of creating down um, uh, sorry, creating a yeah a, a custom looking uh, quizzing slide. Um, the the actual source file for this is available on eLearning Heroes. If you wanted to download it, you just go to the templates area. Um, I've probably done a couple of little things differently in this one that I did in that, but it is there if you want to break it down and have a look at it for yourselves. Um, you would need to. You just need to log in though and um, you can see it working and also download the story file. Um, and if there are any questions, because I am conscious of, of the time, I'm happy for you to, to email me those those kind of questions and things. I, I've got probably a couple of minutes if you do have anything, uh, anything in particular. I'm just going to have a quick look at the quizzing slide. Uh, sorry, the questions, and just see if there is anything in the, the chat area. Um, Lisa, I don't know why the text boxes don't copy through when you set it on that top master slide. I, 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 I'm not really sure. If anyone does know why, um, uh, let, let us know in the, in the chat. But I, I do find that, yeah, I couldn't, I've tried a few different times and couldn't get it to work, so I just, yeah, that's why I just deleted them off and copied the, the main layer one, and that was a bit quicker, um, a bit quicker. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, Noni. It, it's it's um we're still using the the basic uh, uh, mechanics and back end part of, of the, the quizzing questions, but but creating a whole new new look and feel. And and I've seen other people in in the heroes community do it do it other ways. They've they've used like a like a panel maybe going right down the say the left or the right hand side um, of of the of the slide, and then they do something similar in the in the uh, in the feedback, you can you know, put transparencies on there and, and stuff like that. But we can kind of make them uh, a little uh, a little bit more interesting to, to look at than than, um, than than just you know the stock standard. So we don't have to have this. I guess my overall kind of message is that we don't have to stick with the the stock standard quizzing slide um, that that you get in Storyline. You, you we, we can kind of do whatever we want in in, in a sense. All right, well, thanks, folks. Um, that's kind of it for me. Um, um, yeah, Michael, if you wanted to get rid of it altogether, you could do either of those things. Um, I would.